everyone i'm chirag and welcome to part 8 of the tutorial series on amazon tax track so guys in this video i will take you through how to analyze any expense related document or a receipt and extract financially related information from the same using amazon tax tracks analyze expense api and then we will also have a look at how we can parse the response and save the output of the same as the csv within s3 bucket so basically analyze expense api analyzes an input document for financially related relationships between the text so guys if you are not aware of what analyze expense is then you can refer to this video as you can see on my screen so here in this video i have covered a brief overview of the analyze expense api and its functionality so i will post the link of this video in the video description you can go through it from there so now moving along as a next step we will go through this architecture diagram or the flow that we are going to follow throughout this video so here the user will upload the financial document within s3 bucket and this s3 bucket will trigger the lambda function and this lambda function will invoke the analyze expense api and it will pass the required information about the file to the amazon tax track to perform the extraction and once uh, the extraction is performed this amazon tax track will return the response and then this lambda function will parse that response and extract the required information that we want in the form of csv and then it will upload that csv file back to the s3 bucket right so this is the overall flow that we are going to implement in this video now here the relationship or the invocation between aws lambda function and the amazon tax track is the synchronous invocation okay so now as a next step we will go ahead and create the s3 bucket so navigate to aws management console and search for s3 now once you are within s3 management console click on create bucket and give the bucket name i would say trigger analyze expense something like this and then i will leave rest of the option as it is and then click on create bucket now here we have successfully created the bucket so let's open that so it's trigger analyze expense and here i am going to create a directory or a folder uh, with the name upload so what we will do is we are going to set the trigger on this upload folder within this bucket so that lambda function gets invoked whenever any file gets uploaded into this folder now as a next step we will go ahead and create the lambda function so search for lambda and navigate to lambda management console now once you are within lambda management console click on create function and give the function name i would say analyze expands lambda function okay i will select runtime as python 3.9 and within permission i will select the first option that is create a new role with basic lambda permission and then click on create function now here as you can see the lambda function is created successfully as a next step i will click on configuration and click on permissions from the left panel and click on this role name now here uh, we are going to add the necessary permission in order to invoke the amazon tax track api successfully and we would also require some sort of permission to set the s3 trigger okay so for that we need to click on attach policies and search for aws lambda execute and check this basically uh, this will provide access to the amazon s3 bucket and the cloudwatch logs and then let's search for tax track so here we will check the amazon tax track full access but it's a good idea to create the custom policy and then attach that policy uh, within this im role to narrow down the permissions but at this point of time we will move on with the amazon tax track full access and then once you are done with that click on attach policy so here we have successfully updated the im role with the necessary permission so let me close this and go back to the lambda function now as a next step we are going to add the s3 bucket trigger so click on add trigger and search for s3 as a next step search for the bucket name on which we want to set the trigger so in my case it's trigger analyze expense and within event type i will say all object create events and within prefix i will say upload and then i will leave suffix as it is and then check on i acknowledge finally click on add so this lambda function will get triggered whenever any file will get uploaded into the upload folder within 
trigger analyze expense bucket okay so now as an extra click on code and here we are going to update the source code so that this lambda function can successfully invoke the analyze expense api and once it returns the response uh, this lambda function should also be able to successfully parse that response and extract necessary information and store that information in the form of csv back to the s3 bucket okay to update the source code within this lambda function i am going to click on this upload from and click on amazon s3 location now here i need to provide the uh, object url for this zip file which i want to load over here so for that i will navigate to the s3 bucket where i have already created the zip file and uploaded within that bucket so let me uh, look for reference bucket code and within this i have created a directory which is analyze exp sync and here i have this zip file which contains the lambda function code so i'm going to click on that and copy the object url and paste it over here and then i will say save now this will basically load the uh, lambda function source code from that zip file and as you can see the lambda function code is updated now if you also want to reuse the same code then you can navigate to aws tutorial code repository where i have already pushed the same code and then you can navigate to this directory structure and look for lambda function.py in the helper uh, directory so once you download this code create the zip file of that and upload that zip file somewhere like uh, on some of the bucket okay and then uh, once you upload that zip file you can copy this object url and open your lambda function and click on this upload from amazon s3 location and paste that url over here okay so this lambda function will load the code from that zip file Okay, so this is how you can reuse this code. Now, as a next step, I will quickly take you through this code at the very high level. So here we are importing a couple of packages from line number 10 to line number 15. Now on line number 19 and 20, we are creating the Boto3 client of the S3 and the text track service. On line number 21, we are looking if there is a data in the event. And if there is a data, then we are extracting the required information. That is the bucket name and the file name. And then on line number 26, we are defining a structure or a path that where we want to store this CSV file. So basically, we are telling that we want to store the CSV file into the same S3 bucket, but within analyze expense output directory, followed by the file name underscore some random string. So basically, all the CSV file will get stored into this analyze expense output directory. Okay. Now on line number 29, uh, we are invoking the analyze expense API where we need to pass the information about the file on which we want to perform the extraction. Okay, so here we are passing the S3 reference that is bucket name and the file name. And then once the extraction is done, it will return some response and it will get stored into this response variable. And finally on line number 37, we are printing that response and on line number 38 uh, we are looping through the response which says response of expense documents where we will get all the information and then uh, we are invoking the helper function that is extract underscore kv which is responsible for extracting the key value pairs and then uh, we are also invoking uh, another helper function that is extract line items and this will basically extract the expense related information like which items the user has purchased with respective price okay and these two uh, helper function will extract the necessary information and create the csv of that and then it's going to upload it back to the s3 bucket okay so this is basically the lambda function.py now let's go ahead and open helper.py now here within helper.py we are importing couple of packages and if you look at line number 14 that we are importing pandas package and as we know that uh, lambda runtime uh, does not have pandas package pre-installed so for that we need to add the lambda layer for the pandas okay and then on line number 17 we have the helper function for processing the errors and on line number 30 we have the helper function to upload a file to the s3 bucket on line number 34 we have extract line items which is basically the helper function to parse the response and extract the necessary information that we want similarly on line number 90 as well we have the extract underscore kv helper function which is responsible for extracting or parsing the response okay and then it's going to create the csv file and upload it to the s3 bucket okay so this is basically the helper.py and as a next step as i mentioned we have to add the pandas package so let me scroll down to the layers and click on add a layer 
and here we will select custom layers and within custom layers i will select pandas 3.9 and i will select the version that is 1 and click on add now if you want to learn that how you can create the uh, pandas package or the lambda layers then i have already did a tutorial on the same i will post a link of that in the video description but if you don't want to create the uh, lambda layers manually and you directly want to reuse what i have created then you can again navigate to the aws tutorial code and within that you can look for lambda layers package and within that click on python 3.9 and and here you would be able to find pandas underscore 39.zip file okay so basically using the zip file you you should be able to create the pandas package for python runtime 3.9 okay so this is how basically you can uh, reuse the code and the pandas package in your lambda function as well now as a next step we will click on configuration and click on general configuration and here we will increase the timeout from 3 seconds to 10 seconds so that uh, this lambda function does not get timeout while we invoke it okay so click on save now here i think we are all set so if we look at the flow then we have created the s3 bucket we have set the trigger we have the lambda function in place we have updated the permissions as well and then uh, we have also updated the lambda function code okay so i think we are all set for the invocation but before we go ahead and do that let's have a look at the receipt that we are going to use in this video so here as you can see on my screen i have this receipt which i have downloaded randomly from the internet and this is how the output looks like okay so here we have the summary fields which basically contains the key value pair and then here we have the line items where we have items that the user has ordered or purchased and its respective price along with the quantity okay so as a next step let's go back to our s3 bucket that is trigger analyze expense and open the upload directory and let me drag and drop that file that is restaurant receipt so i'll simply drag and drop and click on upload now if everything is configured correctly then we should be able to see another directory within this bucket uh, with the name of analyze expense output okay so here as you can see so here we have analyze expense output and within that we have the file name that is restaurant receipt followed by some random string and here basically we have two files that is key value.csv and the line items.csv so we will have a look at these files in a moment but before that let's have a look at the response that we have printed within this lambda function okay so let's click on monitor and say view logs in cloudwatch so here we have the invocation log so let's click on that and here as you can see here we have the response that we have received from the uh, analyze expense api so let me copy this and open the json formatter over here and paste it over here and click on format beautify so basically this is how the response looks like so here we have the document metadata then we have pages and within expense documents we should be able to find all the information that we want to parse or the information that is of our interest okay and within expense document we have expense index and summary fields okay so basically uh, we should be able to see two items within expense documents that is summary fields which contains the information about the key value pairs and then we have line item groups uh, which contains the information about the items that user has ordered or purchased with the respective price and the quantity okay so let's have a look at one of the entity in summary fields so here uh, the very first entity is basically the vendor name that is of type vendor name with the value of crown plaza okay if you scroll down to another entity then it says type of other and then the label is basically tbl that stands for table i guess and the value of the tbl is 39 slash 1 similarly you can basically look through the entities and have a look at let's say uh, type other and here we have the label detection as net total and here we should be able to see the uh, value of that net total that is uh, 5632 okay so basically uh, we can parse through this uh, response and extract the necessary information now if we look at the line item groups then here we should be able to uh, see the type as item and the value that the user has ordered is uh, burrata and the value would be the price that is of type price and here we have the value detection that is 16 and if we scroll down then here we also have the quantity okay and the quantity that user has ordered is one okay so similarly you should be able to find the rest of the entities in here 
and then we also have the expense row type okay so here uh, the value would be one burrata 16 comma double zero so if we look at this receipt then expense row basically contains the information about a single row okay this whole row would be considered into the expense row so as you can see this one burrata 16 comma double zero and it would be same for the other entities as well so if you look at the uh, one pan d coca 3.50 expense row then you should be able to find this information as well okay so we will get an idea once we have a look at the csv file that we have stored okay so this is how the response looks like now let's go back to our s3 bucket and download this key value.csv now let me open this So now here as you can see here we have the vendor name as uh, crown plaza and then we have tbl 39 slash 1 net total gst total chk subtotal and all other information that has been extracted from this receipt now let's have a look at the line items So now here as you can see here we have the line items.csv and here we have the list of items that user has ordered with its respective price and the quantity and then finally we have the expense row item that is one burrata 16 comma double zero but here as as you can see the price is basically one comma or one point six double zero and i think uh, it's it's kind of misclassified but i think there is some sort of formatting issue in here so let me open this file in the sublime and double check okay so here it is so here we have the first item that is burrata and here it looks good right so i think there is some issue with the editor that i am using to load that csv file so guys um, this is how you can basically extract the line item groups or the summary fields or the key value pair and the expense related information from the uploaded document so you can basically try it out with other uh, financially related document okay so guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.